Good evening, Tyler Bieber on the call once again for tonight's huge game four between your humble Broncos and the Nippon Hawks. The wind got the metaphorical. It was crazy. The whole town was just rallying around us even more than they were before, which I didn't even know was possible. And they score! Captain puts it up high and past Hobbs. It was back and forth. It could have been anyone's game. Now down to the circle. Shots leaves it was Trim. Left to Trim and score! We pile it on, but they, they're a really skilled team. Here comes Brandon Arnold for a shot, scores! Well, this game is tied once again. I think we got a little too high on our emotions, and we were just excited, and you know, we thought, you know, why not us, why not us? Brandon Arnold in the circle, looking to pick his corner, and it bounces in behind Wasserman, and the Nippon Hawks have won the game in triple overtime. The boys were beat up, but Nobody was down. There was no ounce of disbelief in the room. It was more determination than it was disappointed because, you know, we had another game coming up in Nippon, and I think we were ready to go. I went up to Logan Hunter, actually, right before we entered the bus, and I was like, you scoring tonight? He looks back at me, and he's like, buddy, I'm scoring two. The atmosphere on the bus was like, we're here to win. We're not going to lose. Yeah, it was just a normal game day. Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Quintessential small town Canada. Let me tell you about me. About where I come from. For 50 years, young men from across the prairies have made it part of their junior hockey journey, playing for the Humboldt Broncos. Across the fields and the prairies, of charted waters unknown. It's welcoming. It's what Humboldt hockey is. They love the Broncos. Everybody in that town wants to be a Bronco. If your kid plays hockey, his dream is usually at least to make the Broncos. Gale with a chance, in front, back, and scores! This is the biggest show in town, and it's part of the fabric of that town. Go! The kids are excited to see the Broncos. They point them out on the street. They're the rock stars in the little community. How much fun is it to feel like a superstar and feel like these kids adore you, they want to be you? Ten times Humboldt has celebrated a league championship. The Humboldt Broncos! the Junior A Champions of Canada. Making their beloved Broncos the most successful team in SJHL history. The town's support, foundational. The Broncos are so entrenched in this community in every way, shape, or form in a way that I've never seen anywhere else. I hear of all these people saying, I've sat in that season ticket seat for 37 years. The people that serve on the board are volunteers that have real jobs in the Humboldt area. Everybody that works in the rink is volunteers. Thanks, buddy. They take you in, and you're a part of the community. The ladies at Sobeys and Co-op, they know your name. They, they know what you're looking for. Oh, well, that's the type of almond milk you like. The driving force behind the Broncos was head coach and general manager Darcy Hogan. Hired in 2015, along with his wife Christina, who ran the office. It was more than just Darcy's job. I worked for the team. The kids are involved. So, like, the team was our whole life. We'd spend hours and hours down there. Like, our kids are as familiar with the rink as they are our house, and that's kind of how we've always lived our life because Darcy's like hockey was Darcy's passion. He was just down to earth and genuine and kind hearted and caring. He would always put others first before himself. Those values were reflected in the players Hogan pursued. Guided by his core covenant, he built a team, putting character above all else. He looked for guys that care about the game and want to win. And he also looked for guys that are good off the ice as well and care about the community. At what age did you start skating? Three, I think. Three, six, 
Celtics. We would volunteer players every Sunday and go out and actually coach the younger kids for about two and a half hours a day. They're everywhere. You, know, you can see one of the boys at Sobeys, uh, and they're more than happy to stop and say hi to your kids. The only thing we knew is that we wanted to make these boys into good men. The day that you know we had that massive snowfall, we we're in the middle of playoffs, very important practice, and Darcy said, you know what, boys, we're going out and we're shoveling driveways, we're shoveling sidewalks. So he called into the radio station and he said, if anybody calls you guys looking for people to shovel, you can call on the Broncos and we'll show up at your house. We looked for character kids, we found character kids, and they became character men. They were so close. They did everything together. <laughs> right off the bat, like we showed up at camp and it was like, it was tight, it clicked immediately. The relationships were just so strong. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. We were the tightest team I've ever played on. Like there's never been a team that's been so close. But I know that they had a, a thing, they'd all get together and watch The Bachelor and they had a pool of who was gonna win we just watched the show together, just a group of guys getting together and, you know, gawking over some girls and just having a great time. So we were all just a group of best friends. And we all had the same purpose. We all had the same drive. We were all there for the same reason. I love the bus trips, and those were, like, the best times. It's just strictly team bonding. You talk about everything and get so close with someone. And again, it's a second home, second family. It's always been like the safe place and a place for us just to, to hang out all together in one place and not have to worry about anything. Coaches are usually at the front. It's always the most senior veterans are at the back. And the rookies usually sit up at the front or in the middle, depending on where the veterans left them. I was a rookie this year, so I sat near the front, and it's kind of the seating arrangement. What's your name? Ryan. Full name? Uh, Ryan Alexander Strasnitsky. Ryan Strasnitsky is an 18-year-old defenseman from Alberta. His passion for hockey runs deep, but it didn't start that way. He was four when Tom put him on skates, and um, he didn't want to do it. He just resisted every step of the way. Are you doing anything, buddy? He hated every minute of it. He just didn't want to put on the skates and wasn't driven to play. Get the puck, Ryan! After about six months' worth of, of going on there, he's like, oh, okay, fine, I guess this is what I'm doing now, so. Go get him, buddy! My dad loved hockey he, ever since he was a little kid growing up, so he kind of got me into it. We have our feuds uh, a lot, <laughs> but I mean, if he wouldn't have done that, I don't think it would be as mentally strong as I am now, for sure. A few seats away, one of the newest Broncos, Evan Thomas. Okay, Evan. Better shoot the hockey puck or something. Evan first laced up his skates at the age of two. and for the next 12 years, played under the tutelage of his father, Scott. The bond that Scott um, had with Evan, I mean, Scott spent hours planning practices on the ice with Evan. I don't think I missed a game of his from the time he was first stepped on the ice until he went to play AAA midget. There's the coach, Scott. If he played hockey 12 years, I would have been his head coach for 11 of them. Just a fantastic kid, fantastic kid to be around. Evan was cut from the fabric of Darcy Hogan's core covenant, on and off the ice. The only phone call we ever got from grade school was the principal phones up one day and they said, Scott, yeah, we got, Evan got a little dust up today at school. I said, Evan, what's up with that? He goes, well, dad, this kid was getting picked on at school, so I stepped in the middle and I ended it. 
And I said, well, who was the kid? He goes, I don't even know, Dad, but it was just the kid that was getting bullied. He was proud to wear the humble Bronco jersey. He was proud to play for Darcy. He respected that he was a Bronco and that people were like, oh, that's Evan. He, he's a humble Bronco. He loved it. I got the advantage here, Hank, some left. I don't think it matters. This is gonna be sick, buddy, watch this. 100% hold one. Not even close. Towards the back of the Bronco bus, usually sat the veterans. Yeah, woohoo! Including 19-year-old centers Braden Camrude and Derek Patter. <laughs> That's a joke. If you don't get the hole in one here, you get uh, a two? 12. <laughs> a 12. Is this your comeback into the game? This is the only hole that matters. Me and Derek were, were close. We, we had a really good relationship, obviously kind of being the same age, and we're both kind of goofballs. So I'm here with Perrick Dadder uh, after nine, and uh, we're just checking in and seeing how you're feeling. Uh, how you feel yeah, he's pretty interesting. He likes, he's different. That's the best way to describe him. I could have called him Phil too. Perrick Dadder, love it. Their attributes on the ice were much different each bringing needed elements to the game. Braden is a skilled guy. He can make plays below the goal line, above the goal line, on the wall, in the middle of the ice, and he, he's really dynamic. Here is Braden Cameron, the most dangerous Bronco. He shoots, he scores! If I could describe him, it would be sort of like Brad Marchant, except without maybe the licking. <laughs> Derek himself, he's a utility guy. You can use him in multiple situations. Need a extra guy on the power play, he's there. You need a guy to kill penalties, he's there. Take an important face off, he's there. Play the pattern back door, they score! He is an aggressive, hard skating, hard checking, little SOB you call it. By March of 2018, the Broncos finished the regular season in fifth place. Long shots to win a league title, the group looked inward, galvanizing for a playoff run. We had a team meeting right before playoffs saying like, you know what, like we've got to bond here even more and we got to become closer and tighter and do everything for each other. <laughs> At that point, like when I knew how close we were, I knew there was going to be some success for our team and I knew that we were going to go make a deep playoff run. We were so close netted after that and um, we realized that we had a shot. Good evening, I'm Ty the Bieber bringing you tonight's action. As expected, the Broncos eagerly anticipating face-off in this best of seven series. Darcy always emphasized using the phrase, why not us? Shulaski, forward back and scores! The humble Broncos are heading to the SJHL semifinals to take on the Nippwood Hawks. All set for puck drop at the Elgar Peterson Arena and a big battle on the way. A triple overtime loss on April 4th took them to the brink of elimination. To be honest, I was thinking that uh, Broncos were probably going to lose in nip one. Friday night, they'll come back in the bus, they'll have a little bit of a party, see the boys a little bit. Probably Saturday night, Sunday, clean the lockers out on Monday and he'll be home by Monday. We were at the rink having a good time, having a team meeting, and then after that, went low to the bus and just ready to go. Everybody was fired up, like there was an aura on the bus, like we're going into Nipwin, we're winning this hockey game, we're coming back to Humble for game six. I put my headphones in, put my head down, looked at my phone, and that was it, that's all I remember. There was the three of us driving up and we were getting close to Nipwin, and Curtis had received a phone call from one of our hockey friends and had said that the Broncos had gotten to a, a bus crash. As soon as that happened, I'm on the phone. I phone Evan six times, texted him four times. Hey, bud, I hear there's an accident. Please, you know, how bad is it? Nothing, nothing, nothing. So I first tried Darcy, he didn't answer. So then I'm getting a little bit worried. So the wall phoned Chris because I knew Chris wasn't on the bus. Just the instant I heard Chris's voice, I knew something 
And he said, yes, there was an accident and it's bad. You can see the first few emergency vehicles. That's when my mind started to go blank. It was shock setting in. I couldn't decipher everything I seen. Carnage. Couldn't even tell that was a bus. Just saw a bunch of green little boxes everywhere until they pointed out what was the bus and what was the semi. Curtis had said to me, let's go see. And for some reason, I didn't want to. So he ran. And he came back and, and he said, Amy, this isn't good. And I said, what do you mean? He said, the bus is ripped in half. This isn't good. I don't think anyone survived. I fell to my knees and just thinking about what Ryan and, and his, his teammates must have uh, seen. Just a deep emptiness in your stomach, like, what's coming? What's coming? Because you just don't know. I knew in Scott's voice that he said, it's, it's really bad, Lore. It's... It's really bad, and, and it was. It was terrible. One of the very last texts that I sent him said, I love you and you're the best of the best. Now go win your hockey game. The very last thing read before he died was that he knew I loved him, so. begin tonight with breaking news out of central Saskatchewan. There has been a serious crash involving the Humboldt Broncos the team. SJHL, the junior hockey team. The collided with a semi on Highway 35 north of Tisdale. That's Only about minutes from the hockey rink where the team was scheduled to play Friday night. Emergency crews rushed to the area by ground and by air. We have gotten word from multiple sources that there are several fatalities. What the people of Saskatchewan are calling their saddest day has also become Canada's. Sixteen people on the Broncos bus lost their lives. Thirteen were injured. Leaving a town, a country, and the hockey world shattered. I want to say to all the Humboldt Broncos families, not one of us is alone in our grief. Continue to reach out. Reach out to one another for help and support. Across our region, our province, our country and our globe, we will find strength in one another. Today and for every day forward, we are all humble Broncos and we will be forever humble Broncos strong. It's just uh, down to the right here. Uh, this is him in his peewee, peewee hockey jersey. He'd have been 12. A couple different clowning around poses, but uh, he was 12 there. Hockey players' relationships with their sticks are pretty personal. These were the three that were on the bus with him. I don't know which one his gamer was. Haven't been able to figure that out yet. Evan Thomas was one of the Broncos who lost their lives. His basement bedroom in Saskatoon remains completely untouched by parents Lori and Scott. I think we need that because it, it's a way for us to continue to feel like Evan's there. I want people to come into our house and know that 
he was such a big part of our lives, so it's a chance for us to talk about him and what a great kid he was, how he lived his life. The basement was Evan's hideaway, his escape, and the first place Lori gravitated to after hearing of Evan's passing. And then once Scott phoned and said he was gone, it just, I just was um, sick. I, I, I just went down with and laid in Evan's bed. <laughs> Sorry. stood down in the basement by the fireplace in the big hug and just cried. And Lori's like, you're sure, right? You're sure? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, he's gone. And then we all sat up at the kitchen table, sat here and watched the sun come up. And I didn't think that was coming up today, but it did. Right there. I said, if there's one, one day, I thought it wouldn't be this one, but it came up. The sun came up. When we got his clothes back from the billets and the two suitcases, my daughter said, Dad, I want to make a, a quilt out of Evan's clothes. I thought it was something I kind of had to do. Um, because we have a suitcase just sitting downstairs. I know, like, I use some of the shirts that he, I swear I have like a hundred pictures of him wearing, like the red one with the little pocket. And I know I wanted it to be something for my parents that they could use just to give him a little more comfort. Um, so yeah. I'll come home from work and just come sit down here and because Lori's still at work and Jordan's still at school and it's just me and so I'll just come and sit in his space and then usually go out and sit on his couch where he played video games all the time. I enjoy being in his space. It just feels like there's a little bit of him here and you don't know, but maybe, maybe he's here. Collapsed long, broken ribs, mashed his shoulder, brain bleed. Obviously, the spinal cord injury in the T2, T3 level. That means I won't be able to walk again or have a lower percentage of walking again. Every day now, when I put on my clothes, I just, wow, this is so easy. I just step into it just changes your view on everything. It was pretty devastating. We didn't know what we were gonna do, to be honest. There were some depressing moments. Uh, at first, it was like everything, all happiness was drained from you. And you just felt tired and you just wanted to go to sleep. Like you didn't want to do anything. It wasn't fun. Hockey was everything. It's all I did. It's all I trained for. It, it, yeah, it just felt like I, I had nothing left. Guided by friends and family, Ryan refocused. Your options are so wide open right now. I said, let's get you healed first, and then we'll see what pops into your lap. I'll go through, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Turning to daily physio and rehab, Ryan was determined to remain near the sport he loves. Okay, this is good. We're gonna just get this down nice and controlled. Ready? Yeah. Good? Yeah. I remember talking to my parents. I 
said I wanted to play slash hockey. Right? You can breathe it. You can breathe it. I feel like if anybody could do it, it's him. Because he's, like, strong. He has that determination. If I have a goal, I'm, I'm going to work towards it and hopefully reach it. There you go. After the accident, after the operation, breath. he's it flipped a switch, I think. Looks good. He just wants to keep pushing, and he will. With the community still mourning, the humble Broncos gathered their board of directors to discuss when to return to hockey. We knew that there was a definite need to have the humble Broncos in this community again, and that it would happen for the 18-19 season. I don't think there was any discussion on that. The, we needed a team. You can't stop a team. That's important to everybody. The Humboldt Broncos announced on Friday that they will move forward and play in the next SJHL season. First will be the task of recruiting a head coach and general manager. After something like this happens, you want you want the world to stop and you, you want to sit and grieve and hide, and, but you can't because that's not life. Broncos need to put a team together and they need to hire a new coach. And life moves forward. Morning. You yeah. remember what team you're on? Yeah, gold, Hunter uh, Johnson. There you go. Sear room seven. Thank you. Yeah. With no coach or GM yet in place, the organization must forge ahead. And you are in room five. Room five? Yeah. And begin constructing a new roster. 200 young prospects are brought in. Pay attention here, D-man. Look where the open ice is right now, right? The search for building blocks underway. Well, that's two shifts in a row. He's made something happen, eh? Carry it a little bit longer, draw the guy to you, then make that pass, right? One on one, one on one. Good job on the back check. There's one guy that kind of jumped out at me. Hey, Good. So, Luke, we talked a little bit. We like what we've seen before this and then in camp, so. Right. We'd love if you became a Bronco, so are you open to that? Thank you. Thank you. This is an important day for us as an organization. And, and a decision has been made on a new coach and GM. That's great, so great. So, 36-year-old Nathan Oistrick is chosen over 50 other candidates. He comes with NHL experience and has roots in the province. Very much so. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Um, on behalf of my wife and I, um, I'd like to thank the Humboldt Broncos Hockey Club and organization for the opportunity to be this organization's next head coach and general manager. He'll not be Darcy Hogan, but he will be Nathan Oistrick and he will bring something new. and and. We will always cherish everything that uh, Darcy brought to our organization. Nathan is going to be a new era, and it will look different. Thank you, guys. Thanks. The first time I walked into the office, I broke down. Like, I lost it. His writing was on the boards. His pen was still there. You know, every time I go in there, I think about him, because he was, he was the organization. Honestly, like they announced the coach and I kind of went home after that day and I just kind of stayed in bed for the rest of the day. And it was kind of that day, I think maybe that things started to feel more real for us. I don't want hockey to stop. Darcy wouldn't want hockey to stop because of any of this. He would for sure want it to go on. But to be really up close and personal and to see all of that, I don't, I don't know if we can do that. I don't, at this point, don't know if that's going to be what we can do. Christina has retreated to the comfort of family. Visiting her sister, she contemplates her future. For now, the atmosphere in Humboldt has proven too emotional to bear. You go to the grocery store still and you buy your groceries and the cashier's tearing up and saying how sorry she is, you know, like you, and for the kids, I think they just want just to not hear it 
constantly all the time right now. Like it's like straight up, Jack. I don't care. I know you don't care. It's my job to care. Now it's just everyday life. It's everyday stuff that Darcy would have been involved in. And, and being a single parent now, like you don't ever get your off time. So I'm not always a great mother. You wanted me to go get sushi that day for you. Do you not remember that day? Nope. He would have been the one that would have stepped in and be like, oh, okay, you're done now. He wrote me notes on napkins while we were out at, at dinner. December 7th, 1999, to the lovely Christina. If I could pick and choose the best characteristics from all my past girlfriends and put them together to make one girlfriend, it would still not compare to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is just part of them too. I have a whole, I have a whole nother, I'm pretty sure it's at his mom's house. I guess my priority for right now has to be my kids. You know, second I would be like looking, trying to look out for the players. I feel like Darcy cared so much about all of them. That's, I guess, maybe what I'm wrestling with. I don't know, I've never really done anything like this before, so I guess what, what's to come, you just, you're not really sure. I'm, I'm almost full full recovery, you know. Um, I don't feel anything while I'm working out here. Only thing that kind of still still stays with me a little bit is, you know, the nerve damage that's in my arm. So I broke my right tibia. I had a broken nose and I had a pretty pretty major concussion. Derek, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. So you can see here, you can hardly see where that fracture line was. Yeah but there's all this new fluffy bone around. So that's how your body heals this. I'm ready. I knew I was, with my injuries, I was gonna be able to come back from it and be as good as I was. And since then, that's been my motivation. Braden Cameron and Derek Patter are on the road to recovery and begin their summer training regimens. Both are determined to be in the Broncos opening night lineup. For me to come back was a really easy decision. He's had other opportunities presented to him, but he's choosing to play for his friends and for the community. Okay. Make me work. Get him. I feel like I got a weight vest on, but I don't want to let anybody down. Good inside, good. Every time I'm on the ice and I'm wearing, you know, my colors, and I, I think of them, you know, it's our whole team, and, you know, I'm representing them now, and I'm representing, you know, the town, and every single time I'm, I'm out here, I just, I'm always out here to try to make them proud. Uh, it's Friday morning, we're headed to Kinsman Arena for Full day of work, hit the gym, on the ice, physio. It's been really important to me. It's kind of given me something to look forward to. It's uh, something that you can get up in the morning and be excited for. Okay, who's up? Pitsy. Am I doing this? Yeah. Sure, I'll go yeah. for it. Remember, the movement is more important than Sweet. killing it. Yeah, well, I'll go further down. He can't go far, come on. Come on, I got a broken leg. <laughs> I'm proud of the way he's dealing with it, but I think a lot of him is still numb. Go! I kept saying to him, are you sure that this is something that you wanna do? Are you sure that you wanna go back? Um, and he's been yes. He has that internal drive. Once he decided he wanted to be ready for opening night, I knew it wasn't going to be a question of, can we push him hard enough? It's how much are we going to have to hold him back? September 12th, I'll be ready. Buddy, I, I can't stop smiling. To see these kids fight, both in the physical battle to get back, the mental battle to get back, and be in front of the public and for really a, a country, the ability to handle that has been unbelievable. It makes me feel a lot better having Derek there and having each other, I think. 
because then if one's up and the other one's down, they can talk things through. Buddy. How's it going? What's going on, that? bud? Good while, eh? Yeah, that's how you doing? Good, how are you? Come on. Feeling pretty good, actually. Good. Ready to go? Good to hear. How's your ankle doing? Good. Ready yeah? to go. Yeah? Excited. Nice, yeah, me too. Being able to see him every day and, you know, hang out with him is, is definitely going to help me. It, it would have been really hard to kind of do it on my own. And I think he probably feels the same way. Uh, what have you been up to? You kept to like it all? No, nah, just oh. been hanging out in the city. Yeah. We were close before the accident, and since the accident, we've become even closer, and we keep in constant contact and just respect each other's decisions and are just there for each other when we need each other. It's going to be weird going back into the room for the first time. I'm glad they didn't change anything. They didn't change? I thought they were going to change stuff. They didn't, no. Having somebody there knowing what everything's been like will make it a lot easier. As soon as we get on the ice for like that first practice, I think it'll just be like really different. Like Yeah, it'll be an adjustment period. Yeah. Basically like a new team. It it's like a new organization. When I first heard that Nathan was hired as our coach, I was obviously a little bit upset. Unfortunately, it kind of has to be done in order for our team to be able to move on. We want the D to have the middle of the ice. So we got to pick a lane. We're going to take a wide lane, all right? For him to carry this weight on his shoulders now, it's, it's going to be very difficult and he's going to be known as the guy who came in after the tragedy and tried to re kind of build this team. With the final roster selected, Nathan Oistrich brings the new look Broncos together. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. He anoints a new leadership group with a respectful nod to last year's captain, Logan Schatz. Just so everyone's aware, uh, for right now, we're gonna have three assistants, okay? Clarkie will be an assistant, Camel will be an assistant, and Derek Patter will be an assistant. Uh, we probably, we're not gonna have a captain this year, and that's to honor Shotzi, all right? 11-15 tomorrow, good day, boys. As September 12th approaches, and with the home opener set to be nationally televised, those closest to the town and the tragedy brace themselves. Do you have a thought on overall the way this was covered by the media? Yeah, it was a lot, but um, I'll say this, there was too many cameras in people's faces here. It, it put a real negative on people when more media is going to come down at any time. Here, we get it every day, because everybody's living it every day. Our community feels we just need time to heal in our quiet way. It's too much too soon for Ryan Strasnitsky and family. They've chosen to stay away from the season opener. Ryan has thrown his efforts into a new passion, a new challenge. It was brought the smile to my face again, you know, when I first, you know, started playing hockey. And just enjoying myself out there. It's, it's almost like time freezes and you don't have to worry about anything. You're just worried about what's going on in the ice. You're just having fun. The minute you get that body position, you push up. It's so hard to keep an edge, right? Yeah. So you pretty much just fall, right? You fall over work. A moment of pure elation. Ah. I was just so excited to see him like that. It's a little more difficult for him because he has no core, so it's hard for him to 
turn the sled. Go, go. Get that turn going, turn going. But again, it's only been twice. And each day is another improvement. Okay, start skating, start skating. Learning the skills, the stick, and how to move, and just everything. There's so much to learn, but but I'm again, I'm older, I'm more mature and willing to learn, so I'm excited to see where it takes me. Your yeah. hands are doing two things at once, <laughs> right? And then you're just like switch. You're stick handling, and you gotta be able to stop, and then you're oh. transferring, right? So it's just, that's a lot. He wants to make the coaches proud, and, and Dana, and, and Tyler, and Brody, everybody. I'm sure it's on his mind all the time. He wants to do it for them and dedicate his life to all of them, I think. Get that shot off. Oh. Beauty, buddy. Uh. Humboldt, Saskatchewan is one of those great Canadian hockey towns right in the heartland of our country. Tonight, their beloved Broncos play their season opener. And so the town will come together and stand and cheer for their boys like they always have. And our country will stand with them as it has since April 6th. Game day. The heavily anticipated moment arrives with mixed emotions hanging in the air. On its most basic level, it's a hockey game, but it's obviously so much more than that. It's about carrying on after unspeakable tragedy. It's so many things to so many different people in every way. Many people think that going to the events would heal us. That's just a distraction from our grieving. It isn't rah, rah, rah here. It, it, it's a deep emotional scar that needs to heal. Today's harder than I thought it was gonna be, honestly. The hockey part doesn't heal us, doesn't do anything. It's kind of a more personal journey for us because Darcy was a lot more than hockey to us. If it was five years from now, it'd be too soon, but knowing what hockey means to that community, they gotta get on with life. They do, and that community needs the Broncos, probably more now than ever. There are 29 families, 16 dead, Two kids, two young players still in hospital and others with catastrophic injuries. How difficult must it be for so many of those families who don't have a player skating out on that ice tonight that otherwise would have been? Everybody who gave so much after the accident, they're pretty invested in this and they want to see how we're, how we're doing. Definitely a feeling of sadness. And lost opportunity. Evan would have been probably on their first line this year. Just that feeling of how different it, it should have been. I mean, it, it should have been different. Weight has been heaped on the shoulders of many young Broncos, but none quite like Camrude and Patter. There must be a churn inside them to think about their friends that are no longer here, to think about what it means to be back on the ice. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be hard. I think it might be harder than he thinks it's going to be, but I, I think they'll be OK. I know he's nervous, and he's got a lot to think about. The weight on his shoulders, I can feel it, because he feels it. I had a really rough night. It, I, you know, I, I got to the point where I, I didn't even want to show up to the rink. It was, uh, it was difficult. They're very, very emotional. We talked to them before the game and told them everyone get into it early, get a hit, get a shot, do something good, and from there it'll snowball. Skated up to Powder and I hugged him and I 
You know, I said, you know, it's for them, buddy, and I love you, so. It was five months and six days ago that in tragedy, the Humboldt Broncos united the hockey world. Tonight, Humboldt brings us back together again as the Broncos return to the ice to honor their past and to take the next steps into the future. TSN is proud to be at the Elgar Peterson for a season opener like none other. The first period results in tentative hockey with both squads feeling the weight of the moment. Seem really anxious to shoot the puck. But in the second period, finally, a true moment to celebrate. Scramble drop, up with it, Gunter across, Kim scores! The Humboldt Broncos have scored! You could almost hear the exhale. Like, holy crap, we did it. Broncos just scored. Eventually, the Hawks find their stride. Score! Cole Beeman has tied it for Nippowin. Despite a gutsy effort, the Broncos come up just short. It's not about the score. The victory was them playing tonight. The first steps for the humble Broncos. In many ways, they came here for a hockey game tonight, but they also came here for this. 29 forever together. All the numbers of all the players on the team will be retired, never worn again by any future members of the humble Broncos. The 2017-2018 Humboldt Broncos were an amazing group of gifted athletes guided by incredible staff. And tonight, we honor and pay respect to those lives lost and those that survived. There remains a long path to healing for many. And wherever we are, we will always keep them in our hearts and we will continue to be honored to share this world with the 13 young men who came off that bus. I've been asked tonight to speak on behalf of the 29 families and give thanks. If you're a first responder, if you're in one of the hospitals that had a horrible night, if you gave to the GoFundMe or a scholarship fund, if you sewed a quilt, sent a picture, if you signed an organ donor card, if you sat and prayed, we say thank you. On behalf of all our sons and daughters, we want to thank everyone in this building tonight and everyone at home watching on TV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Down. Look at Cam was wide open yeah, for goal line one T. Goal line one T right now. Goal line one T. Goal line one T. The following day, Cameron and a few teammates gather to critique their performance. I was just sitting there just in case you missed the net completely like every other time. 
<laughs> My heart and soul was in the play. Oh. They saw it. <laughs> it's a much needed chance to blow off some steam. Call for it, Eddie. You're wide open there. <laughs> Take a pause before heading out on the road to Nippawin. I'm just looking forward to seeing the success of all of my other teammates who I still have here with me. They're great people and, you know, I love them so much and I can't wait to see what type of career they make for themselves and what kind of beautiful families they have. And I know that the boys are gonna be proud of each and every one of us on whatever path that we take. The accident will not define the Broncos, but it is part of their history. Coming together as a community, the accident really did bring people together in another way, and that's not gonna be long forgotten. Fifteen years from now, when there's a new group of players and a new board, those people will remember. It will be talked about. Their legacy will continue to live on through this organization, through who they were as people, through their families, and through how we honor them. And we honor them every single time we step on the ice and compete. doing what we can to make sure that the legacy continues. After less than six months on the job, Nathan Oistrick announced his resignation on Twitter early Friday morning. But in a statement, the Humboldt Broncos say it was mutual. Assistant coach Scott Barney will take over as interim head coach for the remainder of the season. What we've been through is something no one else in the world has been through our situation, so we can relate to each other, and that can help you heal. We're family now. We need to go back to some sort of routine and some sort of normal, and that's hard and humble. Jaskarat Singh Sadhu has pleaded guilty to 16 counts of dangerous driving causing death and 13 counts of dangerous driving causing bodily harm. He was guilty, he acknowledged that. That's all I needed to hear. Xavier LaBelle is a young man that exemplifies courage. I'm pleased to announce today Xavier is going to be joining the Saskatoon Blades Hockey Operations staff. to play hockey at York University. It was just a no-brainer. 
but I'd like to welcome today from the Ranch, Saskatchewan, play for Humble Broncos, Buffy Grace Best. Alex Jewell with the shot, the face-off, rebound, score! Matthew Gomersic. Great play by Nikki Simlansky, the former Humble Bronco. This Saskatchewan team that became Canada's has seen an outpouring of sympathy and generosity. Shortly after the tragedy, a GoFundMe was set up. $15 million was raised to support the victims and the families affected by the crash. A Bronco who donated his organs and saved six lives in death. The Logan Boulay effect. Transportation safety issues arising from the Humboldt Broncos accident. The call for seatbelts is gaining momentum on social media. Buckle up for the Broncos. It's that simple. The social media movement sticks over Humboldt. A worldwide tribute continues with hockey sticks popping up everywhere. Canadians will never forget the tragedy that these sticks represent. Tyler Bieber on the call once again for tonight's huge game four between your humble Broncos and the Nippon Hawks. It's just fun to play, like it's a good game, it's lots of fun, like I was just in it since I was young and I never quit it. this first playoff win, it's just awesome. I, I love everybody in that room. It's a really cool feeling. 